Today, let's look at the factory options for our twin carb cars. So I'm thinking of the PV544, Amazon, P1800 and 140 series. Um, so starting with the earliest, on the B16 engine, so the early 544 and the early Amazon, they got the SUH4 carburetor. Um, and these are very obvious. Uh, there's lots of giveaways besides the fact that it's fitted to a B16 engine. Um, the reservoirs, the fuel reservoirs are mounted outboard. You only have two bolts that secure the air filters to the carburetor. The choke mechanism has this bridle here operating two very elegant brass arms. Um, and then these spring sprung linkages that connect the two butterflies together on the carburetors. So there we go. Obviously very rare. Um, the SU H4 and only fitted to the B16 twin carb engines. With the introduction of the B18 engine, Volvo upgraded to the SUHS6 carburetors. Um, and comparing that to the ones we've just seen, the differences are, note that now the reservoirs lie inboard. Um, if your car happens to have a pair that lie outboard, what that means is somebody sourced a pair of carburetors, probably from an MG, and fitted them to your Volvo. Um, but the Volvo setup, the reservoirs are in the center. And that means you have to have, which this is missing, a heat shield underneath here. Um, all the Volvos had a heat shield here to try and protect the reservoirs from the exhaust manifold heat. Now the early carbs um, only have, again like the H4, two boat holes to secure the air filters to the body. But the choke mechanism has changed significantly in as much as you have two cables. One drops down here and operates that choke there. You can see that moving. And then a separate choke cable fits to this bracket and operates that choke like so. And there you go, that's quite a nice illustration of how the choke works. What this is doing, when you operate the choke, if we get the right lever, is dropping the fixed jet down the tapered needle. Now because of its tapered needle, when you drop the jet down, that means you're getting a larger diameter of jet is exposed, i.e. more fuel. And so that's how it enriches. And then what it does in addition to that, so that, that's making the mixture richer when you operate the choke. But then, this is the butterfly here, which is sprung loaded like that when it's installed in the car. When you pull on the choke, this cam here then lifts this butterfly here. So that's the fast idle. So your choke cable does two functions. One is it gives us a richer mixture by dropping the jet there. And secondly, it gives us a fast idle when that cam come, opens up the butterfly. There we go. So that is the early B18 setup, a pair of HS6 carburetors.
Then in 67, I think, 1967, um, the SU HS6 changed subtly and instead of being two bolt holes for the air filters, they gained three tapped holes. So these have 5 16 UNC threads in them. And here's the illustration of the 1967 B18 123 GT Amazon um, with its correct installation. So the mid period 1800 SUHS6s, there's its return springs that I was telling you about for the throttle. Um, its reservoirs in the middle, and that is the heat shield that should be there. And if we come round this side, and as we were discussing about the um, mid period, three bolts securing the air filter to the carburetor. Okay, so that's the mid period 1800 SUHS 6 installation. There is a final configuration of HS6, which I don't have, I'm afraid, so I shall just explain. Now, the two litre cars received the final evolution of the HS6. Now, the 1800s require a spring, a return spring, to keep the throttle shut that goes between here and the exhaust manifold nut here. So that keeps the, the butterfly closed here. The two litre cars actually have a return spring wrapped around the butterfly spindle. So therefore you do not need an external return spring going to the manifold stud. Um, so that is, uh, that is the final evolution of the HS6 fitted on the two litre cars. Now we come to the Stromberg era. So the B2140s then received twin Strombergs instead of twin SUs. Uh, the B18140s still got the SUs. So the B20140s, uh, so yes, yeah, so the twin Strombergs, uh, CD two SEs or CDSE, uh, very difficult to tell the difference between the two. Um, in fact, I don't know how to tell the difference between the two. I suspect it's primarily internal. Now the Stromberg has a failure mode when the car carburetors are getting a bit old. And this failure mode is that you'll be driving along and you'll unexpectedly get a rapid tail off of power. You'll drift into the side of the road and the engine will stall when you put the clutch in. Um, leave it for 10, maybe 30 minutes. The engine starts perfectly happily. You go along for an indeterminate amount of time maybe again 20 minutes an hour even sometimes and you lose power pull into the side and you don't know what's going on this problem is due to this bimetallic strip we reckon in here and here um, and requires a good rebuild um, uh, so if you have this perplexing and apparently inexplicable loss of power, that is my first port of call. Check out those bimetallic strips. And the other thing to note is that on the Stromberg, there is this little datum line on the dash pot top here. And there's an equivalent one just beneath it on the Stromberg body and this must always face the air filter. It is not uncommon for us to find this data mark actually lined up there, there or there which is wrong. Um, it does need to face the air filter. And the other lovely thing 
which this has beautifully is that out of the factory both on the SU's and the Stromberg's they always received a little brass tag on each of the carburettors um, these have two numbers one is the Stromberg or SU part number which relates to exactly how this has been set up what needles are in it and so on but also the equivalent Volvo part number and they even tell you just for completeness front and rear um, so you know which carburetor is which so there we go um, that is the two major different types of carburetor the SU on the B16 and the B18 and the Stromberg on the B2140s. Our Bible reference for the configuration of these carburetors is available from Berlin Fuel Systems and it's this, the SU reference catalogue for the SUs or for the later car the Stromberg or they call it the C Zenith and CD catalogue. And in the back of the catalogue, besides having all the exploded diagrams, we have the configuration for the Volvos. Um, the SU part number, the type of carburetor, and the components that went into it. So that is a really useful document. And finally, rebuild kits are available. We strongly recommend you to use genuine parts. Um, they will come in boxes like this uh, and available from Berlin Fuel Systems uh, and I'm sure there'll be lots of other people who will also supply them. Their quality is unquestionable whereas pattern ones one worries and for the effort involved of rebuilding a carburetor especially if you use the full kit um, it, there's absolutely no point in saving two percent on the price just by buying a pattern one they come in two different types a service kit which is a lightweight kit and a repair kit uh, which includes things like the butterfly bushes for instance so there we go to summarise, the early PV and early Amazon with the B16 engine, they got the SU H4 carburetor. The SU HS6s went into the B18 engined 544, P1800, and Amazon. And in fact, the 2 litre P1800 and 2 litre Amazon got the last evolution of the HS6 with the integral throttle return springs. And finally, the 2 litre 140 got Stromberg's CD2SE or CDSE carburettors. That's it, a whistle stop tour through twin carb cars that we deal with here at Amazon Cars. Thank you very much.